All right, last question from assignment. It's called Modified Atwood with Spring, Simple Harmonic Motion. Oh, this scared me at first when I looked at the diagram. Um, maybe this is good practice to look and be scared and then to realize, oh, no, we can do this. An ideal spring of unstretched length, 20 centimeters, is placed horizontally on a frictionless table as shown. One end of the spring is fixed and the other is attached to a block of mass 8 kilograms. 8 kilogram block is also attached to a massless spring that passes over a small frictionless pulley. Block of mass 4 kilograms hangs from the other end of the string. When the spring and blocks system is in equilibrium, the length of the spring is 20, 25 centimeters and the 4 kilogram block is 70 centimeters above the floor. So we're going to draw free body diagrams on both of those. So on the big guy, mass equals 8 kilograms. Gravity acting down, the normal force acting up. Tension, that's not very straight, I apologize. Tension is that way, and the spring force is pulling it that way. Right, on our little block, we have its force of gravity acting down and its tension acting up. Now, to be clear, I guess we could say this is little m times g and this is big M times g. Um, otherwise, we would have to, I suppose, say this is somehow we'd say this is the smaller uh, gravity and this is the larger or something like that. Because what we know in these two situations is that the tensions are equal. So the uh, rubric for this, for the small mass, one point for two correctly labeled vectors, one up and one down, no horizontal vectors. For the large mass, two correctly labeled vertical vectors, one up and one down, two correctly labeled horizontal vectors, one left and one right. So you actually get three points for that. Now, part B, calculate the tension in the spring, okay? This is our old technique where we write a Newton's second law formula for each block, and we try to work them together to eliminate one of our variables. So um, since the system, when the system is in equilibrium, okay, I'm going to use the small block for this, for the small block, right? When we're in equilibrium, that means the forces are equal. So we have T equal to little m times G. So that's 40 Newtons, right? Remember, it's okay to use 10 for gravity when you're doing these quick calculations. So two points for part B, one for using Newton's second law and static equilibrium that leads to a relationship between the tension and the gravity and 1.4, the correct answer, right? Part C, we're going to find the spring constant, okay? We're going to find the spring constant, and we're going to do that using the large block, using the horizontal forces here. Now, we know that Fs is equal to T because we are in equilibrium. There's no net force. And we know that the spring force is equal to K times X is equal to T. So substituting this gives us uh, K is 40 Newtons divided by 0.05 meters. And I got this 0.5 meters from the problem. The problem says the unstretched length of the spring is 20 centimeters. When the spring block system is in equilibrium, the length of the spring is 25 centimeters. So that is where I got that delta X from, okay? We knew that this was the tension. We got that in the last problem. So the answer here is 800 Newtons per meter. Three points for part C. One point for using Newton's law in equilibrium, leading to a relationship between this frictional force and tension. And I'm using static friction in that case there. Um, no, sorry, not static friction, spring force. Goodness. Um, one for a correct displacement of the spring and one for finding a correct, a correct value for the spring constant. Okay, on to part D. Now, the string is cut at point P. The, spring, the string is cut. So... What's going to happen here? The big mass is going to stay attached to the spring and the little mass is going to fall. So they actually break this up for us quite nicely. 
Uh, part D is calculate the time taken by the four kilogram block to hit the floor, right? So I have advised you many times <laughs> to be able to calculate quickly how long does it take something that's dropped from rest from a certain height to hit the ground. We're going to use delta Y equals V initial T plus one half A T squared. V initial is zero. A, go ahead and use go ahead and use 10 meters per second squared if it's going to help you. It really isn't because you got to take the square root anyways, but I still do it. So 70 centimeters equals one half GT squared. We get a time of 0 0.37 seconds. Two points there, one for the correct kinematics formula and one for the correct answer. Or this was kind of wacky. I did not go here. You could use conservation of energy and use MGH where H is 70 centimeters, and then <clears throat> one half MV squared to find the speed of the block when it hits the ground. And then you could do VF equals VI plus AT to find the time, but that's two formula, that's, that's a lot. But again, if that's what you think of, then go for it, it works. Okay, so part E. Calculate the frequency of oscillation. So that's what's going to happen when the block falls. Okay, what we have is we have a delta x of 0.05 meters and it's going to oscillate. Okay, so we're going to find the frequency of the oscillation. Now, for me, I always go to the period. I'm not going to memorize period and frequency formulas because that's going to involve flipping the M and the K, and that's going to get me confused. It's on the formula sheet, so you can just grab it off of there. So the period that I got was 0.628 seconds. The frequency is just one over the period, so that gave me 1.6 hertz. Two points there, one for a correct approach and one for a correct substitution of K. Remember, we found K back here in part C, so two points for part E. Part F, we want to find the maximum velocity of the block. And so we're going to do that by setting the maximum spring potential energy to the maximum kinetic energy. And that'll be equal to one half times M times V max squared. Well, the maximum spring potential energy comes right at the beginning. One half, we have our 800 newtons per meter. And at the beginning of this oscillation, our spring is stretched 0.05 meters and we have to square that all right what i get there is one joule which was kind of weird but all right one joule so one joule is equal to one half m v max squared and so we get a v max of 0 0.5 meters per second two points there one for setting one for realizing that the maximum spring potential energy was equal to the maximum kinetic energy. Then one point for the calculation of V. That's consistent with everything we have done before. And then here we have another extra point, an extra point for correct units and a reasonable number of digits in all numerical answers. And it says you must have at least one final numerical answer to earn this point. So all of that point parts A through F asked you to actually get an, get an answer. So did you have correct units on all of them, okay? And did you have a reasonable number of sig figs? So I guess technically for this question, everything's two sig figs. Um, if you had three, that probably let it slide. Four is probably cutting it, and five is definitely too many. One is never a good idea. So even though even though I just said the final velocity was 0.5 meters per second. Um, still maybe not the best idea there. Um, although there is only one sig fig here. And how, I don't remember how many were. Well, it doesn't matter how many are in the spring constant. If there's only one sig fig here, you can only have one sig fig. But again, don't agonize over it. Just try to keep a reasonable number of sig figs. All right, so that's it for our short answer questions for unit six.